But let's quickly move on now to our top story, and that is on the Pathan Court attacks. When and how were the terrorists who first infiltrated the Pathan Court airbase, where they went on to kill seven security personnel, first detected? How did they operate in two separate groups, and what were they equipped with? For the last several weeks, my colleague Sudhiranjan Sen has been getting details on just what happened on the ground, and we can share these with you now. Interesting details coming out of the Pathan Court operation uh, from, a, from a report given by the three uh, forces that were there. Number one, there were at least five airmen who were struck inside the building in which the two terrorists had taken shelter. These are the last two terrorists who were killed. It is only after these two terror, you know, these five airmen were rescued could the operation begin. How were they rescued? While the forces pinned down the two terrorists on the ground floor, a separate team of the NSG was launched that went in to bring them out. But it was not easy because the airmen had basically, you know, closed the doors and windows and put whatever furniture they had and fortified them. They also did not initially believe that the NSG team and the army team that had gone to rescue them. They basically or initially thought it was a terrorist. So it took a little bit of time to convince them they were brought out and then the operations continued and the last two terrorists were neutralized. More, imp uh, more importantly, very clearly now details have come out as to how Lieutenant Colonel Niranjan died. Contrary to what was going on, the report very clearly says that in the area or the terrain where he was trying to uh, defuse the bombs, it was not possible to wear a 60 kilo uh, bomb disposal suit. Besides, the area was woody and he had to negotiate that on foot, which is why he took a decision not to wear the suit but to go and lead from the front and try to defuse. When he was defusing it, one of the booby traps went off, killing him there. So also, uh, interestingly, the report clarifies that never ever did the heat, se uh, heat seeking or the thermal images that were used, the heat images that were used, showed the six terrorists together. This indicates or corroborates the earlier theory that the four entered separately and two entered earlier. Now, these two terrorists who were killed last did not carry AK-47s, but carried a huge amount of IEDs, huge big IEDs, a lot of grenades and one pistol. This has led the group to conclude or the, the report to conclude that these two terrorists who went in earlier were most likely to act as guides and take these four, the other four terrorists into the technical area and, and blow up the assets. That's a very, very interesting finding of the, of the, uh, you know, of the three forces that operate out there. And finally, a foreign cadet who was there uh, in, for training, it seems, when the operation started, panicked, ran out straight into the area where the operation was happening, literally got killed when the operation had to be stopped. Uh, the NSG and the army launched a separate team. They rescued him, brought him back, and it's only after that the operations continued again. Well, Sudhi joins us now for uh, more of these details. Sudhi Ranjan, you've spoken about the presence of guides. Who were these guides? Well, Vishnu, that is, that is part of the investigation that's going on. But this report very clearly says the way they were armed, that the fact that they were not carrying AK-47s, but huge big IEDs and lots of grenades and only one pistol. Mind you, they only kept firing from one pistol once in a while before they hid themselves inside the Almira, which is why when the explosions happened, they were literally incinerated. So that is, that is the, the conclusion that this group has drawn, that most likely they were try, you know, they were to lead these four into the technical area, and that is why they were carrying so many IEDs and grenades. For sure.